This is about Celsius, another bankrupt crypto <laughs> lender. Alex Mashinsky, the CEO there, announcing today that he is stepping down, citing the fact that he had become, quote, a distraction at the beleaguered crypto lending firm. So this one, pretty crazy. He was definitely sort of the figurehead of what had become a big company in the space and what ultimately was undone by some pretty risky practices that didn't pan out too well. Tossing this straight to Jen for her thoughts on Mashinsky stepping down. Yeah, while I was reading this, I was re remembering when Celsius launched and they were like the bigger, safer option to traditional banks. And here we are five years later and they owe consumers five billion, almost $5 billion in crypto. When I was reading this, I remembered a report that came out in the New York Times. I think it was two weeks ago. Zach, you were off, so you were working. I'm not sure if you, if you saw, but they uh, referred to a recording of a call between Mashinsky and employees. And he had a plan. And the plan was to turn the company around, rebuild it with a focus on custody. And the plan was to charge people fees. So it wasn't like totally clear what the exact thing was, but you know, they're in charge people fees to custody assets. After getting hard questions from employees, he compared Celsius to Delta and Pepsi, saying that Pepsi previously went bankrupt and it still tastes good. And Delta filed for bankruptcy. He asked his employees, do you not still fly Delta? I think this is just another instance of that. Um, out of touchness that, that we are seeing during this bear market, there are companies, I say it every day on this show, who, ha who have had such losses that have affected retail customers to such a great magnitude and are still saying these really kind of cheeky things and not acknowledge, acknowledging the, the um, effect that it's had on their end users. And it is sad to see. Will, what do you think? Yeah, I like the way you put it. Out of touch is definitely one word to use here. Uh, the other thing that popped up in the press release and the things I've seen from Mashinsky is that he keeps talking about this community that seems to exist. And I don't really know if there's much of a community as much as there's an outrage mob that really does not like Mashinsky anymore and has no interest in dealing with him. They just want their money back. They just want some sort of money in their pocket after what happened over the last few months. It's been pretty awful if you were invested with Celsius and if you were leveraged along with them. They're offering 17% plus interest rates at some point. For someone who's not financially literate and doesn't really know where interest rates come from or anything like that, that looks like a pretty good deal. That looks like something that you can actually make some money during you know, a pandemic or during the, the end of a bull market where a lot of people were losing their jobs back in the spring. There's a lot of layoffs. Looked like a pretty good deal, right? And for people walking into crypto thinking that they're not good enough to trade or they're not good enough to spin FTs up, 17% interest rate really suckered in a lot of people. Mashinsky is the face of that, right? So him stepping down is probably like the final, uh, I'd say like nail in the coffin for Celsius. Like they, they have no face anymore. They have no community anymore. They don't really have any assets. They have $1.4, $1.2 billion dollar hole in their balance sheet. Like there is no community. So him to say something about that is pretty laughable. I hope chapter 11 and all the restructuring works out well. It does seem from the initial reports we've seen from Coindesk and others that the people in charge still seem to be a little bit out there living on uh, you know, Planet Nine. We have no idea what they're thinking with this stuff. They're talking about wrapping some of these assets, trying to do some sort of IOU tokens. Like if I was in this sort of position, I would not be very happy. I'd be pretty frustrated. Zach, I'm gonna throw it over to you, get your take. Yeah, this is, again, another sort of casualty of the great unwinding of, you know, uh, May, June 2022 in the crypto markets. These are the things that happened and these are the ramifications and, and maybe potentially, hopefully, this is the healing process toward getting a better crypto system up on its legs. Uh, you know, whether that's Voyager being wiped out, whether that's Celsius uh, seeing at least a leadership change here. Uh, these are things that... Uh, all stem from just uh, a very notable month of May that was triggered by, honestly, the Luna collapse and uh, all its subsequent ramifications. So that to me is like sort of the big picture, I guess. Hopefully this is the battle testing, the hardening of the crypto economy. Um, and, you know, there's probably a few more headlines like this before we, uh, we reach 
that better end state. I mean, you saw Michael Morrow of Genesis also step down. There's been a number of people whose heads have rolled, figuratively speaking, relating to some of the bets that they took during a highly volatile part of the market. Jen, I saw your hand up. I'm going to toss it straight to you uh, for your last thoughts on this. Yeah, you said kind of what I was going to say. I think that both of these stories we spoke about this morning are a reminder that we're still very much in a bear market. And when we when we reach the next bull cycle, I think the industry is going to look a little different than it did previously. And that's a good thing. I think it points to, you know, the industry maturing, getting better. Sure, a few heads will roll, but I think that we will learn from this. And it is a great step to solving um, some of the issues we have in this very early stage industry. So there's a little positive angle.